Thursday of the sixth week of Easter. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Paul left Athens and went to Corinth. There he met a Jew named Aquila, a native of Pontus, who had recently come from Italy with his wife Priscilla because Claudius had ordered all the Jews to leave Rome. He went to visit them, and because he practiced the same trade, stayed with them and worked, for they were tent makers by trade. Every Sabbath he entered into discussions in the synagogue, attempting to convince both Jews and Greeks. When Silas and Timothy came down from Macedonia, Paul began to occupy himself totally with preaching the word, testifying to the Jews that the Christ was Jesus. When they opposed him and reviled him, he shook out his garments and said to them, Your blood be on your heads. I am clear of responsibility. From now on I will go to the Gentiles. So he left there and went to a house belonging to a man named Titus Justus, a worshiper of God. His house was next to a synagogue. Crispus, the synagogue official, came to believe in the Lord along with his entire household and many of the Corinthians who heard, believed, and were baptized. The Word of the Lord. The Responsorial Psalm The response is, The Lord has revealed to the nations His seeing power. Sing to the Lord a new song, for He has done wondrous deeds. His right hand has won victory for Him, His holy arm. The Lord has revealed to the nations His saving power. The Lord has made His salvation known. In the sight of the nations, He has revealed His justice. He has remembered His kindness and His faithfulness toward the house of Israel. The Lord has revealed to the nations His saving power. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation by our God. Sing joyfully to the Lord, all you lands. Break into song, sing praise. The Lord has revealed to the nations His saving power. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to His disciples, A little while, and you will no longer see Me. And again, a little while later, and you will see Me. So some of his disciples said to one another, What does this mean that he is saying to us? A little while and you will not see me, and again a little while and you will see me, and because I am going to the Father. So they said, What is this little while of which he speaks? We do not know what he means. Jesus knew that they wanted to ask him, so he said to them, Are you discussing with one another what I said? A little while, and you will not see me, and again a little while, and you will see me? Amen. Amen, I say to you, you will weep and mourn while the world rejoices. You will grieve, but your grief will become joy. The Gospel of the Lord. How does weeping and rejoicing go together? Jesus contrasts present sorrows with the future glory to be revealed to those who put their hope in God. For the people of Israel time was divided into two ages, the present age and the age to come. The prophets foretold the coming of the Messiah as the dawn of a new age. Jesus tells his disciples two important truths. First, he must leave them to return to his father, and second, he will surely come again at the end of time to usher in the new age of God's kingdom. Jesus' orientation for the time between his first coming and his return in glory at the end of the world is a reversal of the world's fortunes. The world says take your joy now in whatever pleasures you can get from this present life. Jesus points to an otherworldly joy which transcends anything this world can offer. Jesus contrasts present sorrows with future joy. 
A woman in labor suffers the birth pangs first, but then forgets her sorrow as soon as her newborn child comes to birth. We cannot avoid pain and sorrow if we wish to follow Jesus to the cross. But in the cross of Christ we find freedom, victory, and joy. Thomas Aquinas said, no one can live without joy. That is why a man or woman deprived of spiritual joy will turn to carnal pleasures. Do you know the joy of the Lord? To you, O oh Jesus, do I turn my true and last end. You are the river of life which alone can satisfy my thirst. Without you all else is barren and void. Without all else you alone are enough for me. You are the redeemer of those who are lost, the sweet consoler of the sorrowful, the crown of glory for the victors, the recompense of the blessed. One day I hope to receive of your fullness, and to sing the song of praise in my true home. Give me only on earth some few drops of consolation, and I will patiently wait your coming, that I may enter into the joy of my Lord.